Hey everyone, this is Gary House, the Outdoor Cook, back with another episode of the Cooking Everything Outdoors show. And this time, I am going to show you what I think is the most amazing smoker barrel you've ever seen. I'm here with Don DeGraff of D Meat Barrel. Don, welcome to the Cooking Everything Outdoors show. Thank you, Gary. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. You're not going to believe this. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. everything outdoors show. I hope you try this at home. Now Don, you have what I think is an incredibly innovative product. How did this come about? I mean what was your thought process to create this item? You know it's it's really a compilation of several ideas. This uh, particular smoker barbecue has been uh, or barbecue smoker has been in existence for years. It's been kind of one of them closely kept country secrets that uh, those who have welders in their backyard have made for years. And uh, what I did is I've seen several versions of these things and, and uh, having somewhat of a construction and engineering background, uh, I've decided, you know what, this thing needs to be let out to the public. I mean, it, th these are, this is, the secret's just too close to, or too good to keep. So what I did is I took uh, an old, ugly drum and uh, found a manufacturer locally in California that could make me a custom barrel uh, other than the oil drums that you normally seen them in. So we have a custom barrel made uh, for us with straight size rather than the, uh, the standard uh, ringed oil drum, which enables us to actually add accessories to it that the other drums aren't easily uh, accessible. So let me get this right. We got a non-toxic barrel. Correct. It's good, and we can add accessories to it. And we can add accessories okay. to it. Okay. And you just sat around one day and thought, I'm going to build a barrel, better barrel, <laughs> yeah. better mousetrap. Actually, I had a buddy of mine call me up and he says, hey, can you go over and take a look at this thing? And uh, I went over there and I, I looked at it. It was it was rusted up and it was ugly. And uh, I looked at it and I said, you know, this, this is cool. Never cooked in one. Uh, but it just, something resonated with me. It says, you know what, maybe I should follow up. Well, I met another person who was uh, who is now a partner in the business that has been using it for about 10 years. And he says, you know, I'd love to wrap a... A business around this barrel and uh, after he said that the lights went on and I uh, said you know what we can do something with this and again having the engineering background I, I, I did all the math did all the drawings uh, came up with a concept um, hired a local guy to uh, help me weld it up get the prototype done and I tell you it's just it's been an awesome experience uh, from an engineering standpoint this thing should not work the math doesn't add up. Is that right? I, I kid you not. That's it funny. doesn't add up. It's so funny, but it, it works incredibly well. Well, I, I tell you what it does do is it does look good, and that is so much more important than that rusty barrel you've seen in the backyard of some people's houses thinking, am I going to eat out of that? Well, this you'd have, be proud to have in your backyard. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Yep. Yep. You call it a three-in-one? Yeah, three-in-one. Why is a, that? Well, we have a... A uh, standard grate system, just like your normal big box store has. You have uh, uh, a horizontal drum, flat grate system is typically what you see. Uh, with this one here, we can cook that way. You can cook burgers on, hot dogs on it, steaks, whatever you want. The same as a, nor a normal horizontal grate. So one, the three-in-one horizontal grate, the hook and hang is, is the second one. If you want to add wood, it's a smoker. So there's your three-in-one. Fantastic. We can grill on it. We can hang meat on it to slow cook. Slow cook. And we can smoke. We can smoke. Fantastic. We're going to talk about the uh, different, the prototype. We have your prototype here yep. that you originally did. We're going to walk through some steps on the assembly, show you some neat things about that. So, Don, in just a second, I want you to walk us through all the different versions of this barrel that we have and tell us some of the features about it because I know everybody's just chomping at the bit to get to this. Don, you stated very clearly that you use brand new barrels and, and we have one of those barrels in front of us and before we get to talking about a completed version tell me about this barrel and why it's so important the importance gary is simply that it's brand new uh, there is 
absolutely nothing that's been in, that put in this barrel. It comes right out of the manufacturer, right into our shop. So uh, that for me, that was very important uh, for, for obvious reasons. You never know what was put in these things when you start burning. Uh, it is so critical for us to provide something that is brand new and not used. What's unique about this barrel? I know there's a couple points you want to tell us about. What's unique is the, uh, is the straight sides on it. Uh, we've custom rolled this thing to get rid of the rings of a normal oil drum barrel. Uh, again, which it allows us to put accessories, attach accessories to it. And, and it really sets the, uh, the look, the precedence, unlike anything you've seen out there. Absolutely. And where is it made? The United States of America. USA. Don, we, we have a prototype. This is one of your original concept barrels. It is. And this is where you started putting your thoughts together and putting it together and making it happen. Tell me about it and tell me about the beginnings of all of these parts and, and things and accessories. Well, we've, when we started out with that raw barrel that you've seen earlier, uh, it was really critical for me to, to, to start looking at improvements above and beyond what the rancher is doing today. So how do we make this easy for everyone to use, not just the person with the mechanical expertise? So what I did is I said, you know what, let's, uh, my, uh, my partner and I and, and uh, a few others, we, we just brainstormed. I said, what's important? So we started to put this evolve from just a standard barrel that had rebar that I, it was actually cut through the barrel originally. And uh, we decided, you know what, we need to make this thing a little easier, a little more uh, the functionality needs to increase for the standard person. Mm -hmm. um, Let's back up a second. You talked about the farmer barrel. And basically, that's just a barrel where they put the coals on the bottom. Yep. And they had rebar in there. Yeah. And sometimes a grate. And, and other times, they would just hang it. They would just hang it, typically. Hang it. Yeah. Okay, so no grate. No grate. They okay. Would, it would just, they cut holes right through the, three holes right through the barrel and slip the rebar right through it. Right. And just hang. And a coat hanger and a slab of tri-tip. <laughs> Out here, it's tri-tip. You know that. Yep. And you'd hang it and you'd smoke it. And that was it. That and was it was it. ugly. It was very ugly. Okay, tell me about the prettiness. Well, what we decided to do is he said, okay, look, let's let's see what we can do as far as taking the uh, the rebar, dropping that into the barrel, and then addressing ventilation after that. So what we did is, is we said, okay, let's take this, uh, the rebar, and actually have receiving spots for it, lower in the barrel to where we can use the lid as ventilation. So again, optimization of materials. Mm -hmm. So. You don't want to, uh, to uh, going into production, you know, obviously the, the material usage is very important. Right. But uh, also uh, functionality and customer feedback. Actually, if, if you want to cut to the chase, this thing was evolved from customer feedback. Okay. Very important to us. Mm -hmm. we, we would take it on the road. We'd take it to even just fruit stands. Mm -hmm. And we'd do a little barbecue, tri-tip uh, sandwich cookout, and we'd have people look at it. So not only, it just wasn't designed in a shop. This was no. designed based on people, you using it, and right. people saying, hey, well, what about this? Right. And you just kept building and adding. Right, right. So I had the original drawing done. Uh, we had the receiving spots. We did some of the improvements. But a lot of the improvements, again, came from customer feedback. It's, mm. it's so critical that, that I communicate that to you. Because without their help, it wouldn't be where it is today. Absolutely. So tell us about this ventilation lid. Well. You designed that. Yeah. Uh, we were looking at, uh, at the ventilation, the intake and the exhaust. A lot of the, the, the smokers that you see in the stores have a pipe sticking out or mm -hmm. you might see a completely enclosed system that has a pipe sticking out and you adjust it at the top. Mm -hmm. Well, again, that's labor, that's, that's um, uh, additional cost that, that really doesn't need to be there mm -hmm. based on what we found. So what we did is we decided to take some railing, do a railing system so where it, it graduates from zero, which is fully closed, up to a one inch gap. Show us that. So, you take the barrel, so it goes from zero to a one inch gap. That's cool. What other accessories have you added to this? Well, the receiving spots again is for the rebars. The rebar is now recessed down into the barrel. Uh, the original concept had a two grate system, which was one was at a fixed point in the lower part of the barrel and the other is at a fixed point mid midway. The mid grate was is there to catch anything that drops like if, if for some reason the meat would fall off the hook mm, okay it's a safety grade stops it from getting stops in the coals exactly. no charcoal's good for digestion you know that yes yeah okay. <laughs> so but uh anyway that's where it's originated but we found out that that uh 
you know, we needed to have some flexibility in that grate. Because okay. what if you wanted to hang some baby backs in there rather than tri-tips? Right. What are you going to do? Yeah. So right. we added a second layer, a uh, second level that is lower, but it was a very cumbersome uh, uh, process for the user. So the new improvement has as a, a actually a linked chain a chain link system. And you're going to show us that yeah, on we'll a new show version. It to you. you also something I've never seen on them is, is you have a couple accessories here, your side table, Correct. which I think is you know. I gotta have a place to put my beer. You know, that's yeah. all there is to it. Yep. And you have two wings on this, and this is an original, there you go. original design. Correct. There you go. And also, you have a thermometer on here. Right. Okay. How, how do the old timers keep temperature in their smoker? They didn't. They didn't. Right. <laughs> Smells burnt. They they would literally just drop charcoal in the bottom of this <laughs> barrel without a grate, without it just just dump it in the barrel and and close the lid, and. Uh, it, that was it. Okay, so we have a place to put our tools. We have ventilation. We have multiple hanging spots recessed without rods sticking out to catch. We got a thermometer. On the bottom? On the bottom. We raised it off the ground. Normally we've seen them sitting on the ground. We raise it off, put casters mm -hmm. on them so you can drag it around and, and pull it into place wherever okay. you want to store it. Great concept. Stability wise? Stability wise, especially with the side tables. If it, with the side tables as being an accessory, you have uh, the tendency that barrel is going to want to tip, so we added support bars at the base of that to, mm -hmm. to prevent that tipping. It'll actually hold uh, 13 to 17 pound turkey sitting on that table uh, without any problem. Oh, sweet. Okay, we're going to take a look at the finished version, so hang in there.